Hello, Pastor Tyler here. It is October 22nd, it is Thursday, and so we are observing Thursdays in black, and I am dressed in black for the day. Um, Thursdays in black is an action of the World Council of Churches around um, violence and gender-based violence and rape in the world that we may work towards a world without it. We are also in this month of October uh, hearing words of wisdom from pastors about the Reformation. And so for this day, uh, we have Pastor Catherine Bergbush. And Catherine preached at a citywide, um, synod-wide even, uh, Reformation service in 2017 at the end of October. It was October 30th, 2017. And in her preaching, she told some of her own story. Uh, she's got a long memory, and, um, and her father was a pastor, and her father was even a president of one of our predecessor Lutheran bodies too. So she's got lots of history in her being. And she talks about being among the first women in ordained ministry in Canada. And I want to show you a couple of toys that I have. This one's probably familiar. It's Luther as a little Playmobil figure. But I want to hold up this toy. It's a little wind-up toy today. And this is Katerina von Bora. And Katerina's story sometimes gets overshadowed by Luther's. Certainly her story is tied to Luther's. But um, she was known for keeping the house. She was Luther's wife, and, um, and he wasn't really into the bookkeeping side of things or the money management side of things, but she was. And she found ways to supplement the family income too. In fact, she brewed beer um, at the what was the former monastery where they lived. They lived in what's now called Luther House, but it was an Augustinian cloister uh, before the Reformation began. And also, uh, when Luther was creating his last testament, um, his will and testament, he left everything to her, which was kind of an unusual move for the day. Uh, but it said something about his relationship to her and, um, and the amount of trust uh, that he put in their relationship and, um, and in her abilities. And so I think there's something appropriate to hear from Pastor Catherine today uh, when she talks about her own experience being a woman in ministry and, um, and then also being in different parts of the world. Before ministry, she had a background in teaching. In ministry, she um, included in her time as a pastor before retirement was um, a decade or so in Peru. And so she did missionary work and interacted with other cultures as well. So she talks a bit about her own venture into Lutheran ministry. And by way of a prayer to close, uh, we'll use the theme song for the um, Reformation 500, Liberated by God's Grace, a word of freedom. Another thing that I have lived through, of course, is the ordination of women. When I was a, a high school student, my teacher said to me, well, what do you want to be when you go up? How about a minister like your father? And I just remember, I didn't laugh out loud, but I laughed inside, and I thought to myself, I said very politely to her, the Lutheran Church doesn't have women as pastors. And I remember my father always chortling too when he came back from walking down Fort Street and went past the Truth Center in Victoria, and he saw the name, the Reverend Dr. Emma Smiley. He just, he thought it was kind of funny. Uh, so my father probably was not in favor initially of women's ordination. It wouldn't be something that he would, would uh, advise or counsel for. Uh, so then, what, by the time that I uh, thought I had a calling to the ordained ministry and I thought I'd go to seminary. I wrote my parents and told them about this. By this time my father was elderly and was beginning to have some dementia and so my mother wrote me back and it was not really a joyful, happy, oh goody kind of letter. She said, it was a cautionary letter. She said, you know, the role of a pastor, the calling of a pastor is very difficult. 
It's very hard to be a pastor and what you have to do. And you can be just as good as a Christian in your role as a teacher. You know, the priesthood of all believers. And she said, you know, a, a pastor has a hard time to be saved. And I still don't really understand what she meant by that. Did she mean a pastor can't be blessed, can't be saved, or that a pastor can't be joyous? I always saw my father is very joyous in his calling. And then on the side of her letter, as she often did, you know, she wrote up the side. And there it said, and you know where your father thinks a woman's place is. <laughs> well, then I was gobsmacked. Because I didn't know that. My sister Elizabeth might say she knew that, but in my growing up, I kind of did what I wanted. I, did, I didn't do anything radical, of course. I was pretty straight-laced. But I did go off to Europe and hitchhiked around, and I don't remember my mother, my father ever saying anything like that. He didn't say you've got to get married, but he did say sometimes say if you made something well, that's good enough. Now you're you're you're, you're good enough to be married, you know, because the food was okay. <laughs> so I was really, I thought, is my father? think that. I've just been doing what I wanted all my life. I've just been carrying on my life and haven't felt of any restrictions. Well, as you know, I did go to seminary. <laughs> and I remember coming home on a, I guess it was reading week, in mean, my first year. And I was struggling to write uh, a sermon. You know, we had to do a sermon for our, for our class. So here I'm writing this sermon. And after I'd written something, I gave it to my father to read. And he read it and he said, a lot of pastors couldn't do as well as that. <laughs> but it wasn't a very good sermon, really. <laughs> I changed it a lot after that. But I was quite pleased that my father gave me that recommendation. So you can see that even during my lifetime, as long as it has been, and still will be, I hope. Uh, and my time in the church, there has been a lot of changes, a lot of expansion, a lot of in more inclusiveness with the acceptance of, of um, uh, same-sex couples and pastors and ordination and so on. Uh, although that was something that never was in my brain when I was young. And there's much more acceptance in the church of different of changes, of um, different kinds of music, of um, new liturgies. My father would have liked the new the liturgy changes very much. And uh, it's been a time of reformation also, and hope it continues.